So this is the HD0 monitor, and it's a really weird product. I'm just going to start with that. But I really like it. And the reason Carl made this is to make uh, racing events and FPV gathering events more social. What Carl would see when he went to events is people would be on digital or they'd be on analog, and you'd only be able to see one at a time. Um, and some people would only have analog, some people would only have HD0, and it was just tricky to switch between the two, and he was spectating things, and he really wanted a way to just easily watch whatever was happening. Um, and that's where he came up with the idea of, well, why don't I just make a portable event VRX that has analog and HD0 built into it? And that's what he did. Now, I didn't think it was a very good idea, but now that I have it, I think this was a brilliant idea. It's perfect for keeping everybody in the action, um, letting everybody see what's going on. Um, it's super fast to turn on, which is important. Super fast to lock into a video. This is the tool that you don't know that you needed. And now that you see it, you're gonna wanna have it. So I got an early version of this. Uh, so there's no labels or anything on any of the ports, um, so bear with me as I go through this with you. But uh, on the side, it's got a barrel jack input just exactly like we have on the HD0 goggle. And then an XT30 power input too, if you want to power it that way. Uh, down here is an AV input and mic output. So if you want to use this as just for your analog goggles or maybe for like a DVR, um, you could do that. And then here we have a slide switch that's just like the HD0 goggle. It's red on the, on the, uh, the, the real version of this. On the other side, um, we've got an SD card so we can record DVR, a mini HDMI. Oh, sorry, that's a USB-C. USB-C is used for configuring the unit and doing firmware updates. And then a mini HDMI for HDMI output. All right, and then on the top, we've got the two antenna inputs, so this is not a four antenna system, and that does affect its reception. I'll get into that later. On the bottom, we have a quarter 20 tripod mount so that you can uh, stick this onto a tripod, and that is my preferred way of using it when I'm in the field. Lastly, we've got some buttons here on the top just to control. Um, we've got channel down, channel up, um, enter, and then band and channel. All this is described, it's pretty easy. So one of my favorite features of this is just how easy it is to power it on. So I can just take my battery that I use for my goggle. So this is a, let's see here. This is a 4,800 milliamp hour AU line 2S. And it's just got a goggle, uh, kind of barrel connector on the end. And then I strap that into the back here with some uh, battery straps. It does include battery straps in the kit uh, just for this purpose. So it just slides in here. And what I do is I just reuse the extra batteries that I have for my goggle to power this. So I'll plug it in and power it on. And the cool thing is this thing boots up so fast. But right there, it's ready to receive video. It's auto-scanning, finding whichever is available, analog or HD0 right now. So the screen is really bright, 800 nits. It's bright enough that you don't need a sunshade necessarily to use it in uh, daylight, but it always could be brighter, I'll put it that way. It comes with some anti-glare screen protectors, which is really practical for protecting the screen and for being able to see it better when it's really bright out. So what do I use this for? I use this for bench work. So I'll be setting up a drone for the first time and I'll get into the OSD, confirm the camera's working, change the settings to the right mode, things like that. I'll also focus lenses with this um, so I can get them nice and sharp without having to use the goggle. Um, aside from that, this is my handy dandy field monitor that I hand off to kids that want to watch what I'm doing and then they'll, they'll uh, have a lot of fun, you know, holding this little screen that's just for them, and they'll watch the flight and, and really get into it. 
Um, the other thing I'll use it for is I'll set this down on a table and then I'll let kids learn to fly for the first time from this screen rather than having to fit a goggle onto them in a kind of an awkward way. So the nice thing about the screen is that it's got no latency to it. Um, whereas if I were to use like a phone app, Wi-Fi, whatever mirroring, um, or even like an HDMI capture card, that's going to have a lot of delay in it. Um, where this is not going to have that delay. It's just a, you know, input output immediately. There's no buffers because honestly, buffers are not <laughs> in the cards for something so basic like this. This is this is a very simply a screen. So it works very well for these quick a minute tasks. And, and that's what I use it for. I also use it for spectating at races. So yeah, it's not for everybody, but it is a nice monitor. Um, it is a nice low cost, relatively speaking way to do both analog and HD zero. The DVR is nice. It's got uh, 60 FPS deinterlaced. And what's cool about that is some goggles don't have an analog DVR. Well, this gives you that analog DVR. This has an HDMI output that I have flown from. Um, I've, I've, done, I've flown an analog drone from this into my goggle. I've also plugged this into my TV with the HDMI output. I plug it into the TV and then I'll have people kind of fly uh, from the TV, whether it's analog or HD zero, it doesn't matter, it just works. Now, for the downsides, this only has two antennas, right? And I'm just gonna say you're delusional if you think that two antennas is gonna perform the same as a four antenna system. And what happens with four antennas with HD zero is when you have a lot of noise that's random, the left and the right hand group of antennas will work together to combine and remove random noise. As long as the noise is random, if you combine the, the two sides, then the random goes away. What happens with this is you're going to see more random breakup. Um, so just keep that in mind. It's not as nice for purely indoor flying where you have a lot of multi-pathing. It is pretty adequate though for outdoor flying um, where you don't have as much multipathing. That said, it is great. Um, don't let me scare you away from it. I'm just pointing out if you want the best experience, you're gonna have to get the HD zero goggle with four antennas or the VRX four that has four antennas. So with that, would I recommend it? Yeah, for the right person. If you want something super cheap, that does analog and HD zero in one package with a screen, this is, this is the cheapest that you can do. No, no question. Just know that there are compromises if, the, if this is gonna be your main screen. You're, again, you're, you're kind of delusional if you're thinking you're getting the full HD zero experience out of this. Uh, that's gonna be the VRX4, that's gonna be the HD zero goggle. Um, particularly if you wanna fly 90 FPS. If you want 90 FPS, this is a 60 FPS screen and it's not going to give you that butter smooth 90 fps experience it does view the 90 fps just fine and it's not a bother to watch it while you're just casually watching it's just you wouldn't want to fly from the 60 fps screen but yeah if, if you're the right person budget you know if you're on a super tight budget um you don't mind the caveats i just pointed out and you really like the idea of keeping things super social, you know, have something you can hand off to other people that they can fly from or watch from. Um, this thing's awesome. So great work, Carl. I didn't think it was a good idea at first. Now that I've had it, I never go anywhere without it. So if you want to buy this monitor, um, it's available in the United States through Flight Test. That's the exclusive uh, distributor in the United States for this monitor and also through hd0.com. So I would recommend grabbing it through Flight Test if I were you uh, in the United States. I think that they're gonna probably handle shipping pretty quick. And then worldwide, of course, uh, hd0.com. So some other tidbits about this monitor. I believe the software is open source and the CAD files for this are open source. Uh, so do with that what you will. There is a sun visor that you can 3D print for this and then attach, it clips on. Um, I'll put up a picture of what that looks like. 
Also, there's a program for Windows that allows you to change the uh, picture settings of the monitor, monitor and a few other things um, through the USB port. So I'll put up a picture of what that looks like. Um, it's a nice little customizable, easy to use monitor. So the rest of this video, I'll show off uh, some of the details of actually using the monitor and some of the nitty gritty things that it can do and uh, how it works. So this is how the HD0 monitor works. We just flip it on with the switch. It boots up really fast and now it's looking for channel R1. And now I'm gonna have my lovely assistant turn on my drone. All right, so there's our drone. Okay, can you unplug that drone and then plug in the next one? Okay, the next one's plugged in. Can you turn the light on? All right. So just auto switches between the two. And then I'll, I'll change the channel to channel two. And then we just press this button to switch to channel two. And it will pick right up. There we go. All right, it should turn on the next one. There it is. And here I'll just show it does follow the camera's preferences. So if we go to uh, four by three and then save, the screen will follow four by three. If I go to 1080p 30, it actually does show 1080p 30. So that's an interesting feature of this. And then if I go back to good old uh, 4x3, yep, so that'll be my default. So it's a great monitor to kind of set things up with. Everything comes in, including the 90 FPS camera. So here's the Nano 90, and it just works. Uh, so you can see down here, I've got 540p90 turned on. Of course, I can switch to 60 also. And the way this works is the screen is uh, 60 FPS. Oh darn, I just did the wrong one. Actually, this is actually a good point. So it will do the narrow bandwidth mode automatically. So I believe that will Go to rescan and it's going to switch and find the narrow bandwidth high penetration mode automatically. So now if I go and it did work. So that's 540p60 and I can do 720p60. This is again going to switch bandwidth on us. It's saying, oh, you need to reconfigure. That's okay. And the screen will actually automatically do that, which is a really nice feature. Really wish the goggle would do this. <laughs> So maybe we'll get that in the future. So there's a uh, 60 FPS mode. That's going to be native to this screen. So if you were to fly from the screen directly, I do recommend flying in the 60 FPS mode rather than the um, 90 FPS mode. Even though it supports it, it's going to be um, dropping frames basically in order to display it on the screen. So do save here. And then there's 90 FPS. Okay, so we're going to try some pit mode on this analog quad and see how the screen reacts. So really low signal right there. So you can see it does act kind of like a normal goggle would act, a uh, normal analog goggle would act. So it's using a standard like Techwell chip, I think it is, for the display driver, which makes the analog work just like a analog goggle would handle low signal. So that's that.